and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 307. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Starstream. Hello, everybody. How are you doing, man? feel a bit bad. No, well, not a little bad. It's really bad. And um, I, I kind of want to keep it later because it's going to be a very long topic to talk about. Alright, alright. If you say so, if you say so. So, anywho, uh, let's head into the news. Season 8 is coming out next week. So, wow, that, that's um, wow, that, that is very exciting. Like, I can't wait. Like, how long did we wait for season 8 to come out? Like, even a few months? Was it 3? 4? I remember it wasn't that long. It's only like a few months at least. I think it was about four or five months. Something like that. Let's see. Uh, last episode was October 28th. Uh, well, not that long. About four months. Yeah. So, that's cool. I agree. That's cool. So, there's a lot of, well, spoilers were out there for you guys who don't know. We don't talk about it that much. Um, also, EQD has been pushing out all of the synopsis or the summaries for the episode. Yeah, 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 whatever it is. But the interesting part here is that uh, Hasbro officially released this diagram or notes for Season 8. And it's telling which character plays what role in the new um, episode or series. If you guys don't know, Season 8 is going to be one of those Game Changer episodes. And spoilers, Season 8 has something to do with school! Yay! Uh, <laughs> so toyetic. I know, but at least this is fun. So, anywho, each character has their own roles. We go for Starlight. Starlight is the School of Friendship counselor. Okay, she has her own problems, but yeah, why not, right? Huh, such a high ranking position. Are you sure? A counselor? Yeah. Huh. Well, I, in my opinion, it's quite a high, high position. Okay, okay, if you say so. Then there's Rainbow Dash as the teacher who teaches loyalty class, Pinkie Pie laughter class, uh, Fluttershy kindness class, Applejack's honesty class, uh, Toilet is the school of friendship principal, uh, Rarity teaches generosity. <laughs> like, mm, okay. I-, I like where they're going here. It's a very good concept and plan and idea. But all of those things that I just mentioned, except for the counselor and principal, those are mostly virtues. How do you teach those? Yeah. Well, I think probably just remind me of the episode back then where was it Fluttershy who was giving a class to some was it? Or was that a fan fiction? Um classes she teach? I, I think this could be fan fiction because I don't remember which class. I I can't remember. No, like she was just giving us some random class. To ponies or something. Mm. I can't remember. Nah, I, that sounds like fan fiction. If somebody knows what, yeah, your, yes. yeah. If somebody knows what Star's talking about, uh, do put it on the comments below because I got no idea. It sounds like fan fiction, like it's something I've heard before, or could it be comics? I, I don't remember. So let's head into the next news. And next news is Toys R Us. You know those toy company, right? Like the one of the biggest toy companies in the world, Toys R Us. Remember them? Yep, I know them. Very well. Do you remember the mascot, George the Giraffe? I think it was George. Yep. And I think he has a kid, George Jr. or something like that. And a wife, Georgina. (laughs) I'm just making things up. I got no idea. (laughs) But yeah. Yeah, but yeah. So anywho, um, I don't know when, but they're closing shop. They're pulling out in the UK. Most of their American stores are going out of business. And yeah, Toys R Us are just gone. Yep. And that's... uh, Really sad because considering that how many platforms are using them as to market their toys, like well the big companies that is yeah 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 and um exclusive like remember way back when, uh if you wanted to buy the glow in the dark Sakura it's only at the Toys R Us. Yeah, I do remember. Well, some of their plushies is also exclusive since in a sense. Yeah. Then again, their quality is kind of drop, and the thing is that why not many people is willing to buy there was a bit overpriced kind of thing mm-hmm. and um well this the thing is that in in the us and uk i mean not here in where we are from malaysia or, or brunei they do sell video games in their store also so you can you can pre-order games there it's quite nice uh, here's the argument about that too because of digital distribution 
like Steam, PSN, Xbox yeah, Store, but, and whatnot. But then again, but then again, Toy R Us is mostly dealing with console games. It's not Steam games. Yeah, but still, uh, PSN has their digital store. Um, we has no, not we. The Nintendo Switch has its own digital store, and so does the Xbox One with its digital store, and it's much well, easier. Well, I mean. Yes, it is easier, but then again, there is there is GameStop, and people still prefer di- physical copies. Uh, I no, mean, no, no, no. I mean, considering the fact that I prefer physical copy actually because it's more towards. But here's the thing: here's the biggest difference between us and them, and by them I mean the Westerners. Uh, when they buy physical copies, they don't buy it at GameStop or wherever. They'll buy it online via Amazon or. Uh, well, mostly Amazon. I can't think of any other place that they would buy. But still, uh, they buy it GameStop. on GameStop. No, buy it on Amazon. Why would you want to buy GameStop? You don't buy it. People still do outside and still buy it physically. Ah, man. Okay. Uh, I hope somebody in the comments below will prove that I'm right. Because nowadays, the way that GameStop operates, they operate at a very toxic level where hardcore gamers who buy games a lot don't buy it at GameStop. They only buy accessories at GameStop because when they buy video games at GameStop, they try to push this edge card so you could pay more money. Um, also, disc buffering stuff and so on. Like They'll try to push multiple products on you so that you keep paying more than what you need to pay. For example, a game is $60. They'll try to milk you as hard as they can. So instead of paying $60, you leave the store paying 100 that's their goal. It's pretty much the same with Bill Bear. Bill Bear does the same thing. Um, there's a difference because if you buy a bear, or in my case, I'm thinking of ponies, they ask, do you want to buy a sandbox? They'll be cool. If you can say no, then they'll ask if you want to buy fragrance. That's cool. Well, then... the thing is that, well, I well, that is your point. But actually, in a sense that you can say they operate at a, a bit of a toxic level because I do hear complaints that they posted onto Facebook and see in that how they were pushing it to the kids. It says that, oh, hey, uh, you do you want this included in, in your bear or something like that? That kind of thing. And then the thing was that the parents would get pissed because the fact is that they did not go through the parents, but they just go through the kids. So the kids push the parents instead. And you know that. Yeah, that, that's true. But at the same time, too, you have to remember that, okay, uh, build a bear is for kids, so the parents do need to take care of the kids. Now, we're talking about teenage boys and girls who buy video games and those are adults who are well enough to know what's this and that but still uh, the point of the matter is uh, Amazon is where people buy their games also accessories if they want the only reason why you would go to GameStop is to get your PS4 Xbox One controller there and now it's not just Amazon that they're doing the sales. It's also PlayAsia. Uh, PlayAsia is a very special case. I'm not going to talk about PlayAsia because most of our, uh, most of this argument here is mostly for our American audience. If we're talking about local here, I go to a French store that I visit often to play card games. And they also have um, sales of PlayStation 4 and Switch games and accessories. So if I wanted to buy, let's say, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. I'll just go to the counter and ask my friend, yo, I want to buy Dragon Ball Fighter Z, and he'll just sell it to me. Done. So, mm. there's the biggest difference here and there. And there's a local shop, I think I brought you one, called Impulse Gaming in yes. Johor. They don't really push the whole, oh, do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? No, they'll just say, okay, here's the price, cash or credit. Credit, there's 2%. So... You'll just buy what you want and then be gone. Yep. So there's there's a big difference with our local market versus the Americans. But still, um, discussion for another day, podcast for another day. Um, back to point here with Toys R Us. Wow, we mm-hmm. shook went on a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> um, Toys R Us, closing down. Oh, boohoo. Amazon is out to blame. Yay. Uh, but the funny thing is, Toys, Toys R Us in... Southeast Asia, and I'm thinking most of Asia, is still in operations. Yep, it's still in operation. I did hear from, uh, from one of the Thai bronies mentioned that uh, they just recently opened a new store in Thailand. It's not even that. Um, one of our previous guests, uh, Ning, 
Oh, well, what was her name? Uh, I'm using her real name, but... Jasmine? Yeah, but I, I'm thinking about her guest name here. Ah, freaky frack fracks. Um, I, I think I call her name whatever it is. But still... Uh, uh, let me check her name. It should be very fast forward. Yeah, I forgot what episode she was on, but still. Um, one of our previous guests, she was a cosplayer and so on. But anywho... Uh, she works part time at Toys R Us, and Toys R Us is still in operations. So, yay, that's okay, cool, good. It'll be interesting to see how the strategy going forward for Toys R Us is going to be. Yep, so, I agree. And did you found it? No, almost, <laughs> <laughs> almost, almost. Eh? So that means it's there. Let, let me also find it. But still, um, Toys R Us being open locally here is not going to change anything because um, toys are a luxury that most are there you go. Uh, it's a luxury that not many people want to partake anymore I found her name oh, what, what, what was uh, it uh, Lucidity Lucidity what episode number was it again I can't remember oh gosh uh, no because I mean I'm looking through the other side I didn't look through the MBS show oh gosh okay you know what never mind never mind um, Never mind, doesn't matter. It's okay, I'll take this episode. <laughs> <I know. laughs> uh, but anywho, <laughs> but anywho uh, like I was saying, uh, t- toys over here in Asia are not the same as toys in the West. Um, in the West. And by that I mean how nowadays kids don't really play with toys anymore. Uh, yes, I can agree. Yeah, so Toys R Us is kind of rare. The only people who go there are parents who buy baby stuff, like your baby toys and whatnot, and then uh, adults who are trying to find a good deal on Hot Wheels, and me, who goes to the pony section. Uh, me also. Well, I'm just going to window shop most of the time. I'll buy, what I, I'll buy, I'll buy something that piques my interest. And my Toys R Us didn't had didn't have that um what you call this Sunset Streamer Beach Edition, and I am pissed off. I'm angry at that, and I I don't know. I I maybe need to go to another Toys R Us or whatever it is, but still I need to find that one to complete my Sunset Collection. So yeah, very very angry. But that's besides the point. Toys R Us in Southeast Asia seems to be operational and good. Uh, I'll report back if I see any difference. But as for now, there's nothing. And Star, you got anything to add on this one? Mm, nope. I think that's that's good enough. All right, all right. And let's finally head on to the next news. <laughs> uh, after that long discussion about things we don't really know. <laughs> ah, <laughs> but still, next news. So before I head into the next news, have you seen the new Avengers trailer? No, I have not seen the new Avengers trailer. Oh, it's really fun. It's really fun. Uh, the music was epic. It was really huge. And uh, if you've seen the Avengers, they have that theme song that they have, which is really fun. So, why I bring up Avengers is because recently, the My Little Pony Games on the Instagram, they posted a trailer of their own. Um, and said trailer was for their, you know, uh, Game of Mobile game. Uh, mm. And the trailer was really epic. It, w- it was f- to the level of the Avengers. Like, what? To summarize, this was to introduce uh, a new race and characters. And this is the most interesting part here. They're introducing comic canon characters now. <gasps> Does that mean it's gonna be canon in the show? Nope. Damn it! <laughs> but Dang anywho, um, they are introducing the Deers. Uh, if you remember the mainline comic, uh, I think this was not one of our favorite comics to review because it had problems, but it was really fun and nice. Uh, this was the Deer arc in the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic mainline comic. Uh, I'm going to double check the issue that they popped up in, but uh, let's see. You know what, Star, why, why don't you talk about this one while I try and search for the issue? Well, what do I talk about? It's just the deers. I mean, I remember what it was about. It was, if I'm not mistaken, it was the part where, was it the 
Buffalo or, some, or was it the Iron Wheel or something? I can't remember. We decided to open a, a, a resort or something and then they were like toxicating the environment. Yep, it was something similar to that. It was something similar to that. And I think uh, the issue was issue 27? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, uh, it is issue 27. Uh, the Everfree Forest attacking the, uh, what you call this, uh, Ponyville. And a lot of things gone bad. And, oh God, you know what? I'm not going to talk about it. If you want to hear, go listen to the MBS review and discussion. Uh, it's in the playlist somewhere and look for issue review 27. I think this is a two-parter. 20, 27 and 28. Yeah, this is a two-parter. So, yeah. But anyhow, um, they're introducing the deer character. And the deer looks cute in this one. Andy Price work does translate well into a mobile game. So, yay. And I don't know what to say, man. Like, I stopped playing the mobile game a while now. Like, I haven't played that game in years. And them introducing this is cool. I can't wait to see who they bring up next. Because with this, with the introduction of the deers, they could, in, they could do anything, man. Like, dragons, hippogriffs, uh, what else? The cat grace... The cat race only has uh the cappers. Cappers, yeah, the cat race. Um, cappers for the movie or from the movie, but there's also a few other sub. There's also a few other characters of cat race in the comics. So anywho, a commenter on one of the videos, I, I think this was for the Metal Pony movie, uh, review pointed out that one of the comic issue kind of pointed out a country from the movies, and said. Issue is My Little Pony Friendship is Magic issue number 43, Ponies of Dark Water. And in this issue, uh, the ponies are returning from the kingdom of Absinia. So when we reviewed this one, we got no idea what Absinia is. But after the movie came out, Absinia is the country where the cat peoples are from. I'm just going to double check because if I'm wrong, I would look like a idiot. And um, looking back at the wiki, yes, Kepper is from Absinia. And Absinia is a location in the comics too. And you know what? Yeah, uh, the ponies. <laughs> I, I am so confused right now. Like, after this revelation, my brain is messed up. So, reading back in, a lot of characters or some characters or whatever it is could come in or could be introduced into the My Little Pony mobile game. And this is pretty interesting. I wonder how their sales in um, paid item is. Because I know Doc played this and he doesn't really spend that much. Or at all. But yeah, who knows. Uh, to me, this is interesting and fun. So I-, I can't wait to see how it develops. But anywho, that's the news for this week. Oh wow, we're all over the place. I need to... Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> I think we all need a piece of uh, chill. <laughs> yeah, true that. But anywho, uh, let's head into the next topic. And next topic is what have we been doing with our week? So, Star, you haven't been on for a while. What have you been doing? Okay, uh, time to talk about what happened. So, long story short, mm. uh, everything has been the same and whatnot. Only quite recently, I've just been feeling stressed out. What happened was the fact that my PC is officially dead. What? How? There you go. So that was my reaction that I wanted to show. <laughs> so long story short, what happened was the fact that there was a lightning ah. strike in my place and it hit my PC hard. It was so hard that I lost at least 60% of my PC. Oh god, no. Okay, let's see. I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess. All right. Motherboard. Yes. Uh, graphics card. Yep. RAM. Unknown. Okay. Um, hard disk. No damage. No damage, all right. Power supply. No damage. Oh, interesting. Processor. Unknown. Oof. What else is in there that... You know what? I, I got nothing else to say because I got no idea. So, what... The other two things is a dead monitor and a Scarlet 2i2. Oh, if I'm not mistaken, the Scarlet 2i2 is your preamp, right? Yes, my preamp for my audio interface, which is why it was a bit weird today. Oh, man. So, what are you using now? Laptop? No, I'm using my laptop and I'm using the Blue Yeti. Oh, man. Direct connection to my USB. So right now, it's, I'm using USB mode. Mm. Oh, wow. That is... Woof. Woof. 
I, I don't know. See, man. Which is the reason why I don't want to talk about it. I want to talk about it on the show. That way, it's much more. Uh, at least you he- hear it the first time. You get the first reaction. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, say, right? nice keep away. But still, woof. Oh, I, I don't know. See, man. So right. So okay. So the status right now, uh, as of right now, mm. officially, what I've done is that I have officially returned my motherboard to for warranty, okay. and I hope it will be fine. I hope they did not see what was damaged inside the PC. Uh-huh. And they could pass me a new one. Okay, let's hope for that. But the thing is that that motherboard is no longer in production. Oh. So they could possibly repair it, okay. which I, that might happen because I am not sure what they're going to check. Because the thing is that when it turns on, it turns on. Uh-huh. It's just that the only show green light when we, and then the CMOS blue light was on. So when I just press, it does not turn on. So, but okay. Then when we checked the bur- damage, it was a bit burn mark at the Ethernet port. So the lightning fried my Ethernet, uh, fried through the surge protector, mm-hmm. through to the, which is burn it, and damage it completely. Mm-hmm. Kills, basically kills, and then goes to my PC. So that was like the worst brunt of the attack. But the thing is that my PS4 was connected to the same surge protector and it did not did any damage to my PlayStation 4. PS4, yep. So it means that the power lightning was so strong that it goes through the Ethernet port, which is actually bad. Mm. And then not only that, the lightning was so severe that my one of my toilet lights cannot switch it on anymore. Oof, so it's just that's burned. That needs to be replaced. The whole pop exploded actually. Oh okay. and then the switch turned chart black. Oh wow, that's bad. It's really bad. And it was so bad that the main, the main fuse for the power supply just completely burned. Oof. <laughs> it, from what I hear, the lightning was directly overhead. Oh, direct hit. Ish. Direct hit. It's a direct hit. So it's like... That oh. is very unlucky, man. That is very unlucky. I, I, I got no idea what to yeah. say, man. Yeah. I know. It's like, at this moment in time, I have no idea what to say because the fact that I have a dead Scarlet 2i2 and the fact that my Sennheiser HD 6xx is coming. Yeah. Well, um, what I can recommend um, is that for the Scarlet, try and get it fixed for a warranty or something like that. Yeah. My current choice is that my Scarlet is still in valid warranty. I'm still trying to get in contact with the person for some reason. That person is... I text the person, the person did not get back to me. For some reason that he may not uh, reply to me. I have... I feel weird about that. Okay, um... Uh, I got no idea because, uh, yeah, I got no idea on that one. The GPU is mass drop. Okay. So that makes it. You know what? No, no, no. Okay. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. here's what I want you to do for your PC, right? Um, excluding the Scarlet, excluding Scarlet, buy a, a Ryzen five machine. Oh please! <laughs> if my my thing is that there's no point in doing that. <laughs> there's no point in doing that. If if the thing is that right now is my most important is the fact that I need to check my RAM and the CPU. Oh yeah. I have no idea how to check. Uh... So if both us if both of them are still survived, then what's the point of me going for that? Not true. But um okay, what I can recommend you, right, is buying a cheap motherboard just to test out your RAM and GPU. It's it's nothing too expensive or it's too extensive, but make sure that it can run on Sorry, uh, but make sure that your I understand what you mean. It's what building a test bench. Yeah, but like nothing too expensive. Just to test out your RAMs and your graphics card and your processor and whatnot. Just to make sure that things work and things boot up. I think so. The reason why we I say unknown and why not, I actually bring my PC rig on the uh, second or third day of after the damage. I actually bring to my friends there and we do a in- intensive checking. And uh, we can conclude this thing has officially died. Yeah, the motherboard, but the RAM, the graphic card... RAM? No, the thing is that the RAM and the CPU, what we cannot check it is because my friend has a DDR3 system. The motherboard can only support DDR3, and it has the 1150 chipset. So, it cannot test 1151. So, my plan op- option is that once the RMA is complete, and then they swap me a new one, which I can't wait, and I hope they do. And um, so once I got the new system, I could just plug it in and uh, just do the testing from there. Because we did test the case and the case was the, confirmed to be uh, no damage. Yeah, case doesn't really matter. It's the hardware inside that matters. 
which is why it's, it's still a bit hard for me because right now I have I don't have enough USB port for my laptop <laughs> because I use more than four <laughs> dongles, baby dongles. But still, man, oh, that sounds terrible, man. Like, oh, I wish I could do something. Like, I I got no idea, man. Like, that sounds bad. I don't think you can even help me considering how much my rig costs. Oh man, that's... that the burn pipe was the cost of my rig. <laughs> wow, but you know what? You know what? I... Uh, we just have to wait for your rig, uh, for your motherboard to come if it does come, and then we'll hope for the best. Other than that, like, just sweet the game, man. Like. Um, you, you could buy a new one a Ryzen 5 probably a Ryzen 7 or maybe my only choice right now is possibly maybe well I, I report to Mass Drop and they did say that my warranty is over for Mass Drop because it's one year yeah. but I have not yet registered for the MSI website so I'm not sure if they do three years or whatnot. but then again probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy another new maybe 1080 or 1080 Ti instead mm-hmm. and just mm-hmm. deal with it right. I mean I mean it is expensive but all, all in all but anywho anywho um i i will i hope for the best man like i hope that you get your rig fixed and you could start playing games again so uh it's a bit hard because considering the fact that i'm using my laptop game and it's kind of a bit back to my pre-2016 uh <laughs> build. Yeah, okay okay but anywho um uh, you done with that yeah all right um as for me huh Nothing much really to add on to what I've been doing with my own week. Um, like I mentioned before, I went to the masseuse to get a massage and my aching wrists are feeling much better now. They are not aching that much anymore. So I might keep on going because getting a massage is nice and fun. <laughs> hey, you may laugh, but trust me, it's really good. You should go. I do. You do, eh? I do. But what, what, what was the pain? It's uh, it's the nerves in my wrist. Like, if you put oh that one, yeah, you know, oh. like if you put pressure on your hand to get up, it hurts. I know what you yeah. mean. The that's the carpal tunnel syndrome. God dang it! I knew it. <laughs> that's the carpal tunnel syndrome. <laughs> I didn't know CPT, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not Capcom Pro Tour. Ah, man. Besides that, <laughs> besides getting a massage, uh, let's see. I've been doing nothing much in new, really. Um, Here's something boring for people who don't play the card games. Um, uh, Recently, Bushiro announced that they're rebooting the Vanguard series. And a lot of people are excited yet angry at the same time, too. The reason why is, it's like Magic the Gathering. Older cards cannot be used, and a lot of people are pissed off at that. It's it's yeah, pretty much you say it, like it's the the thing. What's with Magic? The way they're doing it right now is they reboot the old cards. I mean, they they put it as a what Master Series yeah, number twenty fifth. That's I the think. um. Re- but the thing is that yeah, but the thing is that the reason why they're doing that is because the old cards is. Because it has vintage, oh, no, so uh, they're no longer in production. Yeah, and it's, it's not that, it's not that. Like, what, what Magic does is that it restricts... Reprints the cards. No, no, it res- um, what, what I'm saying here is it restricts uh, certain cards from being played in the standard format. But in the modern format, you can still use those old cards. But with additional cards and crazy combos that people can pull off, it's not really worth investing that much money into the game if... if after every one or two years, you're going to have to ditch those cards and build a new deck. And what Bushiro is doing now is something similar. For now, it's just the first two trial decks and then the first booster box. But you can just imagine how this thing is going to go because you have to spend a lot of money to keep playing the game. And personally for me, I, I'm thinking about probably stopping because I'm not 100% sure if I want to keep playing card games. If I, I don't know, I, I like playing it, but I don't know. I, I'd rather save some cash to play some video games or upgrade my PC or, you know, save money to go to a convention and whatnot. Uh, finally, someone has an idea of seeing the point of why spending car money on cards is one thing. <laughs> it's one of those things, man. Like, uh, a friend of mine, we, we, we had a long talk about this topic about 
um, buying cards in box and whatnot, like buying the singles that we want, blah, blah, blah. But in the end, he said that he might stop because uh, he mentioned that this month alone, he spent about almost a thousand ringgit on buying cards. If he didn't spend that cash, he could have bought a PlayStation 4. The cheapest right now I saw was 999 ringgit. So you could just hmm. imagine that money going to a PlayStation 4. Yep, I know. Then again, I did invest in a card game, but I never touch it after a while. See, that's the problem there too. You buy, but no. But the thing is that, but the thing is that the card game that I invest in is a bit different compared to Magic: The Gathering or is it a deck building the... game? Yeah, it's a deck building well, game. Well, uh, that one is totally different in the account of it's not a trading card game. It's a deck building game. So those are two different worlds because uh, it's do not call it TCG, but well, they. The their definition of TCG is called living living card game LCG. Yeah, but still, like I mentioned before, um, there's a big difference between between those two. Um, a living card game is you can still play with the base set. It's like a board game. You don't really need to expand if you don't really need to. So you, you could yep. just buy the Resident Evil uh, deck building game and play it as it is. If you want to add mm -hmm. in a more spice to the game, you could add in the second expansion. And I think this applies for another game, a Japanese game, whatever it is. I think it's called Tanto Kore. And that is pretty fun too. Yeah. And so so and so on. But card yeah. games like Magic Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, card 5 Vanguard, those are trading card games where you build a deck on your own and fight another person. And most of the cards can be expensive and cheap. And trust me, if one card costs you about 30,000 yen, it's not going to be worth it. This just remind me of uh, some of the cards in Magic the Gathering where it costs up upwards of $2,000, $3,000. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the vintage card that yeah, is. Yeah, but still, it's one of those things where you have expensive cards and who wants to buy it, right? Yep. Uh, yeah, but, but still, but still, um, that's besides the point. Uh, getting back on track. But anywho, um... I think that's the show for this week. So, guys, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mutualgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show. My Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Star, where can the good people find you? People can find me on my DeviantArt, AngelicorXX, or my Twitter, AngelicorXX. Alrighty then. And also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLive.com. Also, please do subscribe to the Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, you'll catch me, Silver Quill, Sapphire Heart Song, and Guest of the Week reviewing the Pony episodes, comics, and movies. And sometimes we like to review other things too. One of the things that we keep on reviewing is the Miracle's Ladybug. I got no idea why. Probably I do. Um, I think it's to break Silver or Sappy. So yeah, we'll see who cracks first. <laughs> What evil person. I know. What evil person is doing all of this to us? <laughs> uh, also, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com. If you support, you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I'd like to thank Lurker Cat, Starstream, myself, Lag, Amy, Mark, Charles, Lucky Knight, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys, for the awesome support. You guys have been really, really awesome. So, anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. And this is Fast Dream. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun pony episode. Oh, wait, next week is the new premiere of season 8. Oof, that's gonna be exciting. See ya. See ya. See ya.